Welcome to the North Carolina Transportation Museum, one of North Carolina's many state historic sites. We are on the site of Spencer's Shops, established in 1896 as Southern Railway's main repair facility for steam locomotives located midway between Washington, D.C. and Atlanta, Georgia. The North Carolina Transportation Museum was established here in 1977 to share and interpret the rich history of the state's inland transportation systems. Today, visitors can see planes, trains, automobiles, and trucks, and learn how all of those things were tied together to serve the state, our nation, and beyond. We're here in front of the Barber Junction Visitor Center, where the experience begins. Let's take a walk inside. The Barber Junction Depot was built in 1898 for the community of Barber, North Carolina, located about 12 miles west of here. Today, you can buy tickets for admission, train rides, and get information from our friendly visitor services staff right here in the depot. The museum's train ride travels along tracks that serve this important industrial complex while it was being used by Southern Railway. Riders on the train will travel across the 60-acre site, passing its historic buildings and providing views of some structures and areas of the ground not accessible by walking. It's a fun way for kids of all ages to enjoy a tour of the museum pulled by a vintage locomotive. In addition to regular train rides, the museum offers a variety of special events, such as wine and dine on the rails, the Brew and Chew Craft Beer Festival, and family-friendly activities like Easter Bunny Express, Day Out with Thomas, and the Polar Express train ride. The museum's largest single-day event is the Fire Truck Festival, which has grown to around 100 visiting fire trucks and related equipment. It's a great family event and an opportunity to connect with fire departments and collectors of fire trucks and equipment. The back shop, built in 1905, was once North Carolina's largest industrial building. Just take a look at the size of this massive industrial building, exceeding 90,000 square feet, where steam locomotives were lifted from the rails by overhead cranes in order to perform heavy maintenance. A steam locomotive in need of major repairs would come in on one end, be moved down the line, and come back out a few days later completely overhauled and ready for service. By the time the property was deeded to the state of North Carolina in 1977, the back shop had become overgrown and was in disrepair. Starting in 2005, the building underwent major restoration, including window, roof, brick, and floor repairs. Looking better from the outside, the back shop still remained mostly storage space for the growing museum for the next decade. Another round of major renovations allowed full visitor access to the inside of the building beginning in 2017. More equipment and exhibits were moved in, and major events are now held inside this massive structure. This rugged industrial building today hosts wedding receptions and parties, and is a showcase for a variety of transportation exhibits. The trucking industry is deeply rooted in North Carolina's history. Companies like Carolina Freight Carriers, based in Cherryville, North Carolina, grew from the dedication of one young man, Greer Beam, who found himself with a college degree but no job during the Great Depression, borrowed $500 from his father to buy a truck and started hauling fruit from Florida back home to Cherryville. Incorporated in 1937, Carolina went on to become one of the 10 largest trucking companies in the United States and kept on trucking for 60 years. Old Dominion Freight Lines has grown from a 94-mile truck route in Virginia to a worldwide company with nearly 20,000 employees. Founded in 1934 by Earl and Lillian Congdon, the company started with one truck that ran between Richmond and Norfolk, Virginia. In 1957, the company expanded routes into most major markets in North Carolina and Virginia, and in 1962 had moved its corporate offices to High Point, North Carolina. Through decades of strategic acquisitions, Old Dominion expanded throughout the United States through partnerships and agents, coverage now extends internationally, including Canada, Mexico, Europe, and China. The Potomac Pacemaker was one of a fleet of DC-3s that got Piedmont Airlines off the ground in 1948. Founded by Tom Davis in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, the airline changed the industry with its system of hubs and short flights. This DC-3 was built as a Douglas C-53 troop hauler in 1942, and later went on to serve Western Airlines and then Piedmont. A team of dedicated volunteers works to cosmetically restore the Potomac Pacemaker for future display, and visitors to the museum can see that restoration taking place during volunteer work sessions. The Quick Step Hook and Ladder Company, formed in 1891, was Elizabeth City's all-black volunteer fire company. 
Originally, their hooks and ladders were transported in a horse-drawn cart. In 1921, the town purchased this 1917 Brockway fire truck. It held a 35-gallon chemical tank and carried 250 feet of ladders. It was replaced with an aerial ladder truck in 1950. The Southern 550-555 boxcar is in a one-of-a-kind paint scheme, duplicating the colorful scheme that was applied to that car when it rolled out of Pullman Standard's Bessemer, Alabama plant. It was the 200,000th car built in that facility and was restored to its original paint by contractors and volunteers. Atlantic Coastline's Whopper Hopper is the only car of its type ever built. The Whopper Hopper was built in 1964 and could carry 135 tons of bulk materials like sugar or grain. The car was on display near the depot in the town of Rocky Mount, North Carolina, before being donated by the town to the museum. This car is just one example of the unique and significant pieces of equipment we have on display. The Bob Julian Roundhouse was built in 1924 and features 37 stalls or bays for locomotives. It is the largest roundhouse still standing in North America. In the first 16 bays of the roundhouse, a variety of locomotives and railroad rolling stock from the steam and diesel eras is on display. A gallery is also dedicated to telling the story of the Spencer Shops workers. When in use by the Southern Railway, the roundhouse was utilized for running repairs to steam locomotives and later diesels. Locomotives would come in from their runs, be brought back inside the roundhouse for minor repairs and maintenance, and would then be sent back out for their next duties. If more significant repairs were needed, such as a total overhaul, locomotives would be sent out back to the back shop. This is the private railroad car of James B. Duke of Duke Power and Duke University fame. The car was named for his daughter, Doris, and retains that name today. It is opened on occasion for tours and special events. About midway through the roundhouse is a fully enclosed gallery that features a combination of transportation history. The full-sized replica of Orville and Wilbur Wright's famous Wright Flyer, which flew for the first time at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina in 1903, dominates this section of the roundhouse. Visitors can learn more about the Wright brothers and what made North Carolina the first in flight state. Where some of the 3,000 people who worked at Spencer in its heyday once performed running repairs on steam locomotives, the North Carolina Transportation Museum's rail volunteers now maintain the equipment used on the museum's trains. Inside the restoration shop, volunteers perform inspections on equipment, make repairs, and get cars and locomotives ready to roll back out. Everything from touching up scratched paint to the complete overhaul of a locomotive can be done inside these bays. A small number of employees and contractors work side by side with many dedicated volunteers who work in the shop, perform track maintenance and inspections, serve as engineers, conductors, and brakemen on the museum trains, and share their love of railroading with our visitors. Volunteers contribute thousands of hours each year to all museum operations, including rail, auto and trucking, aviation, interpretive guides, and special events. Some of these bays demonstrate the raised walkways that were installed by Southern Railway during the diesel era so shop workers could have better access to the locomotives. Down below the walkways are inspection pits where crews can get underneath a locomotive or car to do inspections and maintenance. In these final five bays of the roundhouse, we feature an exhibit in partnership with Mars Hill University called How the West Was Won, telling the story of the expansion of railroads into Western North Carolina. Some unique artifacts, such as a smoke hood that protected crews on steam locomotives from inhaling coal smoke while passing through a series of tunnels east of Asheville, North Carolina, complement information panels about the westward push into the mountains. The Graham County Shea locomotive, number 1925, is currently on display with this exhibit, but once hauled timber on the steep railroad graves of the Graham County Railroad in and around Robbinsville, North Carolina. The Loretto was owned by Charles Schwab and was built in 1902. The car was the epitome of luxury rail travel at its time. The car is open on special occasions for tours. The railway post office car and the army hospital car are two pieces of rolling stock that visitors can walk through. See how mail was sorted and delivered while trains rolled down the track and walk through a car that carried wounded soldiers from army ships to hospitals during World War II. The turntable, also built in 1924 to serve the roundhouse, is still the centerpiece of railroad operations here at the North Carolina Transportation Museum. The turntable is for turning railroad equipment and moving it in and out of the roundhouse, but today, visitors can even ride on it. This is the flue shop. The tubes or flues inside a steam locomotive's boiler were maintained here. Inside the flue shop is the museum's bumper-to-bumper -bumper exhibit, featuring antique automobiles in vintage settings. 
Cars and trucks from a variety of eras can be found inside this exhibit, including a rare Ford Motor Company Model R, an early electric car, and a number of models from the 1900s through 1960s. Storehouse number three was moved several times, but is the oldest existing building on the property, built in 1896. Today, it is used for a variety of purposes, including event space and children's activities. This is the master mechanics office, which served as the clerical office for Spencer Shops. Today, the building space hosts traveling exhibits and our gift station. This is once storage space for parts needed in the repair of railroad equipment. Now, a variety of traveling exhibits and events use this space. Visitors should check the museum's website for more information about temporary exhibits designed to create new experiences and educational opportunities. Don't forget to stop inside our gift station for a variety of transportation-themed souvenirs, apparel, books, toys, and more. Proceeds from the gift station directly support the operation of the North Carolina Transportation Museum. We hope you've enjoyed your virtual tour of the North Carolina Transportation Museum. We hope that you'll come out to experience the museum that moves you sometime soon. All aboard!